Hey guys, Eric here. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Before we tune in to the details today, I have one little favor I'd like to ask you. Are you listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify? If you are, and if you haven't done it already, it would be so helpful to Anita and I if you could leave a five-star review. It could just be putting five stars or even writing down something that you really enjoyed and learned from the episodes that you've heard so far. This kind of help would really improve our ability to give you better content and also to help other people find out about Taiwanica. So if you wouldn't mind taking just a few moments to do that, if you haven't already, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we really hope you enjoy today's episode. This is episode 28, talking about friendship. Welcome to Taiwanica. We are a podcast that discusses uh, the differences between Taiwan and the USA and their cultural aspects. Today, we have a very interesting conversation about how are friendships made and is it very different between our two countries? Is it different around the world? Well, we'll dive into that. But before that, hi, everyone. My name is Eric. I am one of the hosts here on Taiwanica Podcast. I also am a teacher on Amazing Talker. Uh, here to give you the best quality from an American standpoint and international point of view. And here with me today is the lovely Anita. Hi, Anita. Hi, guys. I'm Anita. I am another wonderful teacher on Amazing Talker. If you are looking for daily conversation class, I'm the guy for you. Hi, guys. How are you doing? All right. Well, she's very excited about teaching. <laughs> she's also a podcaster. I'm also a podcaster. I'm also a slash... A slash life coach. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, we are also life coaches if you're looking to uh, improve your life through coaching. Or heal from your past. Oh, okay. That's my specialty, oh. by the way. Wow. Well, <laughs> well, she's also a great friend, and I think that's why Anita wanted to bring up this topic. This is one that she really thought about, and mm. I'm really excited for her to share her points of view today. Yeah. Oh. Uh, keep it in mind, I just share from my personal experience, okay? It's not like everybody's like this, just my personal opinion. Discla and? Disclaimer, disclaimer. Yes. And experience. And experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's exactly right. We're just giving our points of view here. Um, and also, just so you know, we are wonderful, uh, people only when we have coffee. So, uh, <laughs> only it, when, only we when coffee. we have coffee. So, uh, one way that you can support this podcast is by helping our coffee addiction by going to buymeacoffee.com slash Taiwanica. All right. Now that everything has been said, we're going to just dive right on into today's episode. So, uh, friendship. What does it mean to you, Anita? Ooh, it's a deep question. Mm. You know, for me, a really good friend or friendship is supposed to help you grow together. You mm. know, like the conversation. Of course, you guys can hang out and have fun, but mm. you all, you guys also are able to engage to have a um, deep conversa conversation. And, you know, when we are talking about issues our life issues we're supposed to uh, share our personal experience or uh, opportunity from a loving place and wish the other person to grow mm. instead of just you know complain and a lot of things so you're saying that in order to have a good friendship honesty is one of the most priorities for you to be able to connect deeply mm -hmm. and you know have a true friendship yeah Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Uh, you know, if you want to have a real friendship, you should be capable of talking about all types of subjects, fun subjects, uh, sad subjects, awkward and... subjects, awkward. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and if you don't have that kind of friendship where everything is okay for you just to be yourself in every category of life, then mm -hmm. sometimes it's good to reconsider that friendship. You know, like, should we be true friends or should we stay an acquaintance level? Oh, it's really yeah. good to um, develop uh, your sense of closeness and distance mm -hmm. between people. This is something I'm still working on personally. You know, and also at one point, I think two two points I wanted to uh, share, which is 
the first one is like you know every relationship is supposed to be both of the both of the parties uh, are supposed to agree on where are we heading next you know just like you say should we stay in the close friend zone or acquaintance mm. um so you know like you can tell if this person wanted to have like a really strong deep friendship with you and that's what you want you go there but if you wanted to build something but the other person probably just wanted to you know keep you around and only call you once in a while when they need it or things like that maybe you should really consider a good friend if it's like the the, the relationship is equal or not sure yeah that makes sense yeah and another thing you mentioned is like you know you have to be able to be who you are uh, you yeah. know, it's sometimes it's really hard because when you hang out with friends, you want it to be part of it, you know, mm, so, oh, part of what? Part of that group or oh. part of that community. So you mm. sometimes you probably will force yourself to say something. That's you, not true to you. Yeah. But you feel like, oh, maybe when I say this, they will take me in, you know, they, except they, me. Yeah. Send me to fit the need. For being a having part a, of something, having you know? a sense of belonging. Yeah, we have sense of belonging, but the true belonging is supposed to be who you are, and people appreciate who you are and wanting to build a relationship with you. That's wow. true belonging. Wow, you were very passionate at the end there. Uh, we can I tell that love you love it. belonging. You love yeah, belonging. Uh, you know, uh, I learned it from a very famous writer. Her name is Brene Brown. Hmm. Her work is wonderful. If you guys are interested, you can go check it out. We'll have a link in the description below for you to check out her books. They are incredible when it comes to understanding these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Well, so now that you kind of get an idea of where we're coming from, we're going to give you some examples to, for you to uh, really get a clear picture of what does friendship mean to us based off of our cultural differences. Mm -hmm. So I want to dive in first. Um, one of the things that um, w is basically friendship starts being created when we're kids. Oh. So, you know, yeah, I mean, like you when you first time going to school or oh. when you go to an activity outside, whether it's at a park um, or it's at a birthday party for like your mom's friend's kid, okay. you know, and then like you don't even know who that kid is. But your but, mom, you're the, but the moms are saying, <laughs> hey, let's go become friends. It's like, uh, uh, OK, uh, what's a friend? They're like they throw balls at your face and they're like yelling at you and you're just like, How, is this what friendship is? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, it's a very awkward beginning, right? Yeah, maybe, but yeah. but uh, somehow, just being human, you know, mm -hmm. you're you just get the idea that you want to create that bond yeah. with someone else. You know, it's just a it's just an innate ability. And so, in the USA, uh, the most common way to like where well, friendships start to really grow is, um, like I said, in parks or at um, school. Uh, and the activities that you do together. Mm -hmm. um, and they kind of just slowly develop into more and more complicated types of groups. Um, for example, um, at, at schools, we'll have clubs. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so one of the co most common type of clubs besides sport clubs is um, doing a some sort of activity that um, everyone it has something in common. For example, um, uh, science club. So all oh. the science kids will oh. get together and nice. like experiment together. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, or game club where, you know, a bunch of kids, um, I don't know if anyone here has watched stranger things, but, um, in that show there, there's a group of kids together who really like to play a board game together. And uh, that's another way that people really bond mm. is through board games yeah. or video games. Mm. Uh, and it's a way for you to have something to talk about or something like in common. Basically, same interest or things that you guys can do together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't stop when you're kids. Um, as you get older, uh, it, you know, that kind of bonding keeps on happening. In the USA, we try to generate and, uh, you know, develop more possibilities for adults to do the same exact thing because right now in uh society uh you know one of the most common things besides uh uh what is it Be one of the most common ways of feeling depressed these days is loneliness oh. um and that's mm -hmm. because of social you know social contact has been less with covid or like with social media yeah. So, uh, before people would always get together during weekdays to, you know, have an event together, but now, uh, it's becoming less and less, um, on a weekly basis. So people are trying to create big events. So the one I'm trying to talk about is, um, 
there's one called Comic Con. Uh, and that happens in the United States where everyone dresses up like their either favorite superhero or, uh, you know, movie character like Wookiee from Star Wars Aww. or, um, a video game character, mm -hmm. you know, just to represent them and, uh, bond with all the other nerdy people who <laughs> really are passionate about these things. That's fun. And that's how they become friends. That's yeah, great. exactly. So these really big events is one of the things that we're trying to, keep on creating so that this uh friendship cr uh like activity doesn't disappear mm -hmm. you know because we're becoming more and more solitude in the world these yeah. days so it's um that's another really big thing for how we create friendship mm -hmm. um but uh that's how we create but you know in the usa um in order to uh have a friendship become not just you know we were just talking about that closeness right mm -hmm. uh, uh from being just a distant friend to a close friend we have actually a couple of like um situations uh if you will um that allow us to get close um and they're very special um i have a couple examples in my life that i'm going to share uh so one of those is that um when you once one of your friends is um in a difficult situation for example they're moving to a new home and they don't have like uh they don't have a truck or they don't have uh, enough money to uh ask movers because in USA asking for movers is a lot of money to help you move. So uh one of the big things to help a friend out is helping them move from one place to another. Oh. Um and so we call this getting a friend out of a bind. Mm. Um and it's a great way to really uh, strengthen ties because you're showing to your friend, "Hey, if you need help, I'm there I'm for, there. yeah. Uh, so that's one of the real big ones about, uh, you know, creating friendship. Uh, one, another thing is, is that when they're actually in trouble, like, uh, maybe they got arrested <laughs> for, for some, some reason, some reason <laughs> whatever reason that is, and you like pay their, uh, bailout money, um, and so that they can get out or, um, you know, they actually do something stupid. Um, and I know this from experience. Uh, you are the uh, one who did the stupid thing. Or... No, no, no. <laughs> My friends did the Here stupid thing. All right. So I was in the library in university studying mm -hmm. for um, some exams. You study? I did a, uh, for a moment or two. Um, <laughs> okay. No, a lot of moments. <laughs> but there were some. Um, and then... Um, I got this call from one of my friends who doesn't study. Um, uh, <laughs> at, that at that moment, he was not studying, uh, okay. and he was he, partying. He, uh, I don't think he was partying either. He was uh, he was just hanging out at his house, um, okay. and he, he and his uh, roommates—they're all my friends—and um, they were all just trying out this idea that they had, <laughs> and that was to. Uh, um, to, uh, to drink in a, the smallest room in their house, uh, which is a closet. Um, and, so crazy. yeah, so, and little did they know that their closet door was, would automatically lock oh my God. on them. So they all got into the, the closet. And then they closed the door, uh -huh. started drinking. Yeah, we're having a great time. They tried to recreate Narnia. Uh, basically, Narnia. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, and then uh, just like maybe about 10, 20 minutes into the party, does it want people need to go to the bathroom? And all of a sudden, they find out, oh, no, uh -oh, no the door Ooh. is locked inside. <laughs> so they call, they call people, call people. And then I'm the first one to answer and they're like, Eric, please come save us. We've been stuck in here for two hours. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I was Jesus. like, okay, uh, sure. So fortunately, it wasn't too far away. It's like a 15-minute bike ride away. So mm -hmm. I got on my bike and went over to their house. And I had to, like, break into their house. <laughs> Um, like jump through a window oh, wow. and climb up the stairs. You definitely create yourself as a, like a hero character in this story. Well, yes, I was. I had to cape everything. Jump through the window. Yes, uh, I def It was more like crawl over. <laughs> <laughs> no jumping. Um, I have sensitive knees. Okay. <laughs> Um, and Eric's coordination ability is, is quite great. Uh, it's amazing. Okay, so. Um, I, I went up there and I opened the door and they mm -hmm. all literally oh, like geez. fell out of the closet. Oh it was just so hot in there and they imagine. were sweating so bad. But after that, um, they all considered me like one of their closest friends because That's I great. saved them from certain death. Uh, 
<laughs> so that was uh, one of the re- ways of getting your friends out of a bind. Mm-hmm. Um, and that will really create a closeness for you. Um, another example that I have, and this is more specific towards men. I'm not too sure if women do this. Um, I'm not going to. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not going to speak <laughs> for women. I'm going to speak for men. Um, and um, when you have two guy friends, uh, um, you know, and they're very proud people. I'm I'm saying this because I'm proud. Uh, and uh, you know, we we like to joke around, like say, "Hey, if you do that, I'm gonna punch you, dude." Or, <laughs> "Hey, don't do that, man, or I'm gonna beat you up." Uh, you know, we like to joke around about fighting. Uh, but if you do it too much, uh, you start fighting. Well, I mean, it's uh, it's more about the idea that if you do it too much and the relationship isn't like really close. Uh, then there is a good chance that you'll actually fight. Um, it's kind of like, you know, poking a bear, right? If you keep poking a bear, sooner or later it's going to attack you. Okay. So um, the idea here is that one time, um, same group of people, uh, one of the guys in that house, uh, one time I was just joking around uh, like, uh, hey, man, if you're going to like, you want to fight, dude, I'll, I'll take you down. And then he was laughing about it. But he's actually one time... He said, all right, Eric. Let's do it. Let's do it. And he says, I'll fight you. And he's like, come on. And and <laughs> when guys do that, they start saying, like, uh, rude words to each other, like, to, like, cock each other on. And, yeah. And, and so he's just, like, saying, F you, man. F you. F is mean some. Fork. Uh, yeah, fork. Okay. We need fork to yeah. eat pasta. Okay, fork. gotcha. Fork. Fork you. <laughs> fork you, dude. Fork, fork, fork. And then... Um, <laughs> And so I got closer. We and then when the fight, it's basically you start pushing each other, oh, and then that's when go. it gets going. So, uh, uh, long story short, uh, I won. Okay, <laughs> so I won the fight. Um, Are you sure now? Yes. You have sensitive knees. So back then, I was living. That was when I was living in Mexico, oh, and really? I was really strong because I went to the gym all the time. Because and, I wanted to eat. Okay, and sorry. and uh, <laughs> that guy did not go to the gym. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> it was a very easy a fight, very easy fight for me. Uh, so I, I, I basically we we wrestled and then I pinned him to the floor and yeah. um, he's uh he said four Q man four Q still yeah well I mean because still it was the man. end he he lost so he's okay. very mad but okay. um as men though when that happens mm-hmm. what basically it represents is that um we were willing to get physical. And it, so it didn't really matter who won or lost, mm-hmm. but it was the idea that because we got physical with each other, mm-hmm. um, and we were, we got closer because of it, okay. you know? And so ever since then, that guy has considered me a closer friend than other people because we were able to express our, one of these like natural emotions with each other. I see. And so, um, that's another way to create that kind of closeness, mm-hmm. um, and then the uh, the last one is to uh, support friends in their endeavors. Mm-hmm. And so what that means is um, uh, if you have a friend that is trying to maybe, I don't know, start a project or a company or, uh, you know, trying to just basically d- do something great. Um, and you are out there and saying, I am here to support you and do whatever you need, like maybe – Help them uh, open their store mm-hmm. or buy something fr- that they are creating yeah. mm-hmm. or advertise it to other people for mm-hmm. you. You know, uh, uh, you, this is the, the stuff that uh, people are really close friends would do no matter what, right? So, for example, um, Taiwanica. Uh, I have a friend. His name is Jeremy. Um, if you're listening, Jeremy, what's up? Uh, he uh, actually bought our very first two cups of coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Taiwanica. Uh, and that was a sign to me that I, Oh, this guy, he really, really cares about uh, mm-hmm. our, you know, our pro program, our friendship and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I said that was the last one, but there is one more I wanted to mention. <laughs> yeah. um, and that is um, when a friend will come see you no mm. matter how far away you are oh, wow. i think it's another really good sign of a close friendship mm-hmm. um and uh, i think anita can also vouch yeah. for this um and that is, for example um uh, taking my friend jeremy 
again, uh, wherever I lived in the world, when I lived in Mexico, Japan, or Taiwan, uh, he would always try to make at least one trip to see me mm -hmm. in those locations. Of course, he was doing it for his own vacation, but he made an effort to, to come make to make it happen and mm -hmm. also see me while he was doing it. Um, and so that to me was a tr sign of true friendship because, you know, if you're willing to go out of your way to be able to see someone if they're in a very different location, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, a really good sign that your friendship is deep. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, all the things that I wanted to mention about friendship, uh, on there, but uh, we and uh, I, Anita and I have a couple of things that we kind of wanted to share together, right? With like the a long lost friend. We'll be right back. I really like journaling, but I always end up in no time or cannot find a journal that I really like. So I was like, hey, let me create one. So here it is a self help journal created and designed by Anita. Inside the book, I provide very simple and easy to follow template. For example, in the morning, to the list. In the evening, gratitude practice. So you can use a very little time to start this healthy habit. Go ahead and check it out in our description down below or go to our buymeacoffee.com. Yeah. Do you have a long lost friend? I do not. Oh, I thought. <laughs> oh, well then. I guess that's me then. So, that's you. Uh, so, with a long lost friend, I don't know if anyone else on the, who's listening has ever felt this way, but uh, maybe when you were young and you were uh, at a at elementary school or high school, and you just connected with this great person, they were just so great. But then after you graduated, mm. they completely disappeared off the face of the earth. Uh, you just never saw them again. And you're always looking and looking, trying to find them and just never can find them. And But you always have this feeling that they're out there. Like you know that they're alive and they're well, but you just don't know where they are. Um, and so my example of this is actually of my mom. Uh, my mom... Uh, when I was ever since I was little, she would show me these pictures of uh, her best friend named Kathy and uh, how she told me all these stories about Kathy for, oh, my gosh, 15 years. Just saying, oh, Kathy and I did this. We did that. We went and lived in another state. We did different jobs together. We, you know, laughed together, loved together, all these things. And then all of a sudden, after they graduated from high school, boop, Kathy was gone. And at that moment, like my mom ever sent, like my mom's an older woman now. Uh, it's been 40 plus years since uh, she ever heard from Kathy. And uh, she's always knew somehow that, that Kathy was still there. So, so somewhere out there, she just didn't know where. Fortunately, thanks to technology, uh, there is this way where you can uh, find people it's really like like super stalker style uh, <laughs> technology, but she, everything is definitely legal. Yeah, uh, it's it's definitely legal. Okay, <laughs> um, but she basically typed in her full name onto this um, website, and uh, she was able to find Kathy. And because of that, she emailed her, and lo and behold, it was actually the Kathy that she grew up mm. with. And so my mom and Kathy reunited for the very first time in over 40 years oh, yeah. uh, at the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. And so that last year, that's year. Oh, is it last year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so that was a humongous, uh, you know, change for my mom's life because, you know, no matter how long you are apart, friend, people will still be friends till the very end, you know? So I think that's a really true friend. True friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely yeah. felt that way with uh, one of my friends out there. Her name is Rochelle. Uh, you know, Rochelle and I, we, we've gone through lots of crazy things together. Like, we've lived in Mexico together. We, um, li she lived in Korea. I lived in Japan. Uh, and, you know, she was my long-term friend in, like, uh, middle school. And even though I haven't seen her in a really, really long time, you know, it's I still feel like uh, we are still... Uh, the closest of friends, and yeah, it's just one of those things where you have that friend that will always be 
like that special person just, to you. Yeah, just give you an idea. You know, there were some friends. Probably like you met this friend when you guys are in high school or middle school. You know, no matter how、uh, how long the time has passed, whenever you met this person, you will bring yourself back to. <laughs> <laughs> the era that you met this friend, for example, like、ah, yes. uh, Rachel was、uh, Eric's friend ever since high school, middle school, middle school. So、uh, I met this lady one time,、mm. and then you know when we we three of us met together, we hang out in the coffee shop. We、um, did yeah, one of my favorites.、Mm. Yeah, and then Eric just become this kid, like high school kid, and talk like that. I was like, what is happening? Ah, <laughs> you're talking about the idea、mm. that when you see someone from your past, you transform back into that, that. past、mm-hmm. self, right?、Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. With Rochelle,、uh, we have this thing that where we're birds.、Um, <laughs> yes, they are birds. That's so weird. So we <laughs> act like birds together. It's the strangest thing. They and... will literally become birds on the street and、yeah. making weird sounds、yep. and to bother people. Oh yes, <laughs> proudly. <laughs> yes, it was. It's a fantastic、oh, time、God. every time we do it, and.、Um, No shame whatsoever.、Uh, but the reason why we do it is because we did that when we were young, and、um, we decide that you know whenever we see each other, we're going to do that same thing every time. That's great. Yeah, but that's because, only with Rochelle. With anyone else in the world,、no、I、birds. will not act like no that. No bird. No other bird action. <laughs> no、gotcha. bird. Yeah. But you probably have felt that way with somebody, right? I do not. You do not. <laughs> I mean,、okay. we're more mature. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. So,、um, but let's hear more about you. Yeah, my story is a little bit different.、Um, in Taiwan, most of the time when we were a kid, you know, we don't really have. Most of the time, when when we are school, and we have a lot of things we need to do, right? After school, we have cram school, and、mm. we don't really have clubs for us to go when we're really young. Unlike America, you、mm. know, the kids get off school from, you know, three. Yeah, three p.m. Three p.m. Right in this in our community, every day the kids would just play after like three. You know, a bunch of kids would hang out together.、Yeah. In Taiwan, it's pretty rare. We They basically don't do that because every kid needs to go to crime school after school. So me personally, when I was a kid, I didn't go to crime school, so I don't really have much friends. So,、um, <laughs> just kidding. I choose. You chose. Yeah, you chose. <laughs> I made、one. a choice.、Uh, uh, wait, what? I made a choice、uh, not having friends.、Um, so most of the. Kids like when they are really young, they make friends from school and or the cram school they went to together,、mm. or like you know like when you are living in the apartment, there will be like similar kids in the same community,、um, and you guys will play together in the like lobby or something like that. So did you do that? I do not. I did、uh, not. I was a very shy kid when I was a kid. Oh, okay. When you were an adult, you were not. There will be some transformations in、uh, between. Okay, gotcha. Involved, it's very complicated. Anita, Anita kid was very shy. I was super shy. I'm telling you, like, I will just sit there watching people play. If the one of the kids came talk to me, I would run away. Oh wow! I was really shy, so it was very hard for me to make friends when I was,、Aww. you know, elementary school、oh, or mid middle school. You know, it's really hard. Um, but yeah, those those are the ways that most people make friends. And when you are a little bit older, like、um, middle school or、mm. uh, senior high school,、uh, basically you guys will do like study together. You know, find a different library or different coffee shop during the weekend. Oh yeah, you know, and you will just study for like. Five or six hours, and after that, you guys went buy something to eat together and chit chat, you know, outside Seven Eleven, things like that. Okay, so this is kind of a common thing for most Taiwanese people to do. Yeah, for like the you know kids, junior high or senior high. But me again, personally, I don't, I didn't go to crime school, so I don't really. So what did you do after school? <laughs> I just, I just, I would just go home. Okay, so you just hang out in that house. Yeah, and you know when I was a kid, my mom,、uh, my parents has like a food stand, so I would just go there and do、oh, okay. stuff. Okay. Did、um. you make friends at the food stand? Ah,、uh, no. Oh, okay. Friends weren't a part of your life for a while. Yeah, for a while, and even my parents. I think you know everybody come come from a、uh, different backgrounds, and you know 
value different values. Like my parents, they don't think friendship is necessary. Ah, that's why they don't have friends. They don't.、Oh. Mm, they think you know,、uh, your original family and your family are the two most important things、uh, in your life. When you say original family, you just mean people outside of your house that are connected to your family, like your uncles and aunts and stuff like that. Yes, like、okay. the f- family you came from, like、okay. my parents and my my. Uncles and aunts, like so. Kind of family was the th- was technically your friendship. <laughs> you could say that, but you wouldn't say that's the n- normal thing in Taiwan, right? Most people would have friends outside of family、mm-hmm. in Taiwan. Uh, yeah. Again, based on my、uh, experience, there are some families they do encourage kids to have friendship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. So there are friends in Taiwan. That's good. there are there are,、oh. uh, but just me, you know, because of my background and. We just don't in, in in my family. We just don't encourage friendship. That's it. So、okay. when I was young, I also learned that I was like, oh yeah, friendship's not important. I can go for a trip with my family. Eh, you know, totally、hmm. fine. So when you were an adult, you started having friends, right? When I yeah, growing a little bit older, like、uh, college, I started to feel like you know, friendships actually important because you will do different activities with your friends and you share different kind of things with your friends. And、share things. Yeah, like talking、oh. about your life. You know,、oh. some things you won't share with your parents. Oh, sure. And so, what? When did that transition happen for you? When you were in college? Yeah,、um, in college, and also my experience to study、uh, in France one summer, and that's when I realized, oh, my my family is not going to be there all around all the time. Mm. Uh, because when you're younger, you're in, in your house, your parents will basically take care of everything for you. And when you go outside, you know, out there to this world, and then you just have to do everything by yourself, and you have to start to create、uh, your community, your friend circle, right?、Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's when I learned the skill and to start to make friends. And also another skill I learned is to tell if this person just wanted to, you know. Hang out, have fun time,、mm. you know, enjoy drinking or whatever. Or this, this, if this person is really wanting to have deep、um, friendship with you, that's also another very important.、Um, I wouldn't say skill, but it's like something I,、um, I'll keep my eyes open whenever I meet someone new. So you're saying that、uh, whenever you made a friend. Uh, you were already just subconsciously creating these、uh, different tiers of friendship. You're seeing, oh, is this a friend I'm just gonna go get drunk with, or is this a friend I'm going to share my life story with, right? You know, when I was younger, yes, but right now I started to have like,、uh, whenever I meet someone, I will be who I am. You know, be true for who I am. Every relationship when it starts, I will always wishing this. Is going to be like deep connection, sort of friendship. I'm ready whenever I'm ready. <laughs> I'm、like、ready. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready. Like I'm here. I'm ready to build something meaningful with this person. If、yeah. the, the person willing to do the same thing. So let's just say, for example,、uh, you are doing this. You're being your all. You're giving、uh, your example of who Anita is to everyone. But let's say it's not received the way that you want to receive it. Does that mean that that relationship is just not going to happen, or do you start creating that distance? Um, you know, based on my experience, you, if it's happened before, I will still try to hang on to it. And you know, like maybe I just did something or try this thing. I will able, I will be able to create something that I really want. So, but what if the person doesn't want it? Then you just have to let it go. So you're saying that you would not keep the relationship, right? I will just yes, not keep the relationship because ghost them out. I wouldn't ghost them out, you know. Let's go for a drink. Like you read the line message and never respond. No, I wouldn't be that person. <laughs> I will just say, you know,、uh, drinking is not what if. This、oh. person, you know, I just drinking just not for me anymore. I'm、What、allergic was... all of a sudden. <laughs> no, I wouldn't lie. Like I say, I, I wanted to build a relationship. Doesn't matter what kind of relationship. It's always based on the、honesty. trust and honesty.、Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. I will. 
I'm still learning. You know, sometimes it's just really hard. You know, say,、like, hey, let's go for a drink. I would just like, I really don't want to drink. You know, I would just,、yeah. oh, I can't because you know I have this stomach ache or I have something else I need to do. You know, with my excuses. But right now, I'm just like, why can't I just be who I am? Why can't I just be? Honest, honest with this person because the other person also deserve to know the truth, you know. Absolutely. So that's why, even though sometimes when you say it, it's really hard, you know,、mm. and you feel so old because <sighs> I go to bed around eight p.m. and your party starts at nine p.m. It's just、I'm、too like, late、I'm、for me. I'm already in bed. <laughs> I'm already in bed when the party just started. Yeah. Sometimes it's just very awkward, but when you start to establish this kind of connection based、right. on. Truth, and、mm. you know the other person will respect you for the things that you said to them. Sure, I mean if they respect you that you're an old person, you go to bed at eight p.m. and they <laughs> they still、oh. want to hang out with you maybe at six a.m. to、oh, like yeah, go、right? get some dumping. You know, like also <laughs> that sounds like a dream come true, friend.、Yeah. You know, yes, I think、uh, there is no. You know, this friend is just supposed to be friend with you when you first met. It's always something that you guys build together.、Mm. You know, that's always like that. That's why I learned、um, from my personal experience. I had two.、Uh, I'm about to share some、um, a story, not some, just one story.、Mm. I had two really, really good friends. We've been friends for than ten years, I think. At that point, yeah. So the whole time we've been through high school, university, and become adults for the very first time. You know, got a real job, things like that, and being young adults. Young adults been through、uh, first love. You know, I like this person. I don't know if he the likes、clubs. me. The clubs, the parties, the, parties, the breakups, and the, the late the, night、uh, turkey rice. What the hell was that? I don't know. Late just, night, late turkey night turkey rice, rice after going to the club. <laughs> oh, we used to have oh, this you know beef noodles, but、oh, anyways, I'm, anyways. A I'm a turkey rice guy. All right, so but anyways, let's.、Continue. Nobody asked. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyways, so you know everything that you've been through, being like your friend, doing crazy things together, just feel this young. You know, when you guys together, you just like, oh my god, this is the youth、mm -hmm. you age, feel wild and free. Yeah, that's just how you feel, and just feel great. But you know, everybody should grow up. Sorry, let me rephrase it. Me personally, I think we should grow up somehow. You couldn't be party forever. There are those people, but they really、yeah. shouldn't be there. I'm, I'm, I'm not judging, but just me. I'm judging. Okay, <laughs> just, that was Eric's word, not、okay. mine. For me, it's like if you choose to be party all the time till you are fifty, sixty, good for you. That's your lifestyle. But my lifestyle is, you know, it gotta stop at some point. Yeah. So that's when I started to feel like I'm our friendship, my friendship with those two. People just start to drift away because they are still in this like that keep the party rolling. You know,、yeah. when we're thirty and we just keep doing it, and every time we hang out, I was trying to you know share my share some something like, something deeper, something deeper, basically. Yes,、mm. and they were just like, "Oh, come on, they're so boring." Or sometimes let's, let's look at sexy pictures of boys. Yes, they will always. Whenever you know we hang out, they will just take tons、oh、of photos,、God. and for like twenty minutes or something, taking the photos of food, taking the photos of themselves, and you, we can tell that Anita doesn't like taking photos. I do not. I was I like that. I was like that.、Mm. You know, like. Photos. Yes. But, let's change eight thing different outfits for different photos. But we what? But when I was younger,、uh, I usually don't take much long. I would just probably like ten minutes, and I could get the perfect headshot、okay. because it was that good. But, Sorry about that noise. <laughs> <laughs> I never change my outfit. Okay. Okay. But anyways, you know, I remember there was a very clear day. There was like awakening for me. Like this friendship is not going to. Do me any yeah, good or no? Okay, yeah, sure. You know, that was my birthday party. It was my birthday. I don't really remember how old I was at that moment, but I remember it was like two years ago. Um, they say, "Oh, it's your birthday. Let's、uh, go out and grab something to eat and then and go party." No, no, no. We went to this.、Uh, 
We went to this pizza restaurant. I think. Yeah, it's a pizza restaurant. So when we got there, I was like, "This person, um, if you can connect my story, you know, the last episode I mentioned about I broke up with this person. Oh, I'm not going to, you know, spoil spoiler. Um, you know, listen to this. So I broke up with this person who was very important to me at that time, and I started to transform to this person, to this woman I wanted to be for the very f- first time in my life. So at that time, I did a lot of things. I study a lot. I read books. I go to do exercise to learn the new skills I wanted to do. Yeah. So, you know, at that time, I was really, to be honest, I was really busy on just to, you know,、uh, train myself to be a better person. Yeah. So I didn't really have much time to hang out with those two friends because they are always partying, and、sure. I wanted to use the party time to do something more meaningful for myself. Right. So we, I didn't have much time to hang out with those two. So apparently they are hanging out a lot of time, partying, and so they kind of have this like you know deep, deeper relationship.、Mm. They start to grow、uh, distant from you. Yes.、Yeah, so、and、they grow deeper with each other. Yeah. Basically, and, and when you were together, the three bond that you had before wasn't、gone. there anymore. Yeah, because I wanted to show them, you know, this new world I discovered. You know how great those resources that we have, those great books. You know, there are tons of things that you can do for yourself. Our、girls. minds are superpowers. See, see, things like that. We can, we can change the world, and they're like,、mm, I, I wasn't talking I, about I, changing the world, selfie. but. <laughs> Selfie. So, do you like this filter? Can I post this photo? You know, hey, and you know, there、thing. are people out there that like that. Good for them. Yeah, like、But、I said, it's, say, not, it's the not, not the things I want.、Mm. And at that moment, I just feel like this completely disconnect with the relationship, right? Not just the relationship, but also the lifestyle. Like、oh, I、sure. said, it's like the awakening. Like, oh, this is not the lifestyle I wanted to keep happening for myself.、Mm. And of course, I didn't, you know, just tell them that let's break up or something like that. I was just like,、mm, it's awakening for me, and、uh, I still keep that in mind, you know. And and the next time they will, I was started heard about this, you know, they were asking people to do things together, but I wasn't included in the events anymore. So your relationship between them slowly drifted away. Yeah, drifted away, and. Of course, I was sad. You know,、sure. we've been together for more than ten years. We've been through a lot,、yeah. but it just—it is what it is. Because and... on the outside, you were the same Anita, but on the inside, you were completely different, right? Yeah. So for them, probably they are not. Also, I mean, they are not a friend for me, and I'm not a friend for them because you know I cannot keep the party going. <laughs> How did they feel when you were separating from them? Were they happy? Were they angry? They are so angry. They were angry. Um, um, I think I'm very proud of myself to do the the decision that I made at that time because, uh, you know, again, because I don't want it to, uh, um, my personal life at that time. I think social media has affect my life in a、mm-hmm. negative way, so、okay. I didn't use、uh, Instagram or anything. Uh, at that moment, um, but we still have three of us. We still have a line group chat together,、ah. but just not so active anymore.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but one day, one girl just like send us a、uh, send a、uh, e invite. I don't know how you even call it, like e like invitation for her wedding. And I was just like, if we are really good friends, you're supposed to. Um, I'm I I got too proud there because I think you are supposed to do this, you know. But that's how I feel, you know. What were they supposed to do? To give me a phone call or、oh. you know personal face to face, say I'm getting married on this day. Would you like to come or things like that? But they just send you an e bite. And it's like you know, like the the things you can set online. Like, are you going to this wedding? Yes or no? You know,、oh. like this. It's very not personal. Yeah, in personal, in personal. I, but I guess it's kind of like a trend right now. You know, I don't know. But you, at that moment, you felt offended. I just feel not sentimental anymore,、mm-hmm. and then I was like, "Oh, there must be something," because right now the trend is they will post everything on social media on Instagram. So that's when I decided to download the、uh, social media、uh, Instagram, and I found out it's not just this lady. She's getting married. The other person, she already got married. I wasn't invited to the wedding, and she was pregnant. Wow! I wasn't 
there the whole time, like so big moments. Everything was you were out of your zone. And yeah. Was that the time when you realized that uh, you two, you three, were no longer friends? It's not like no longer friends. It's just we are no longer together. Ah. You know the connection, the meaning, the everything just gone. gone. And I was so sad. And uh, but at that moment, I make the decision. I send them a in the group, no my chat. I send a uh, really long message to them. Ah, I yes. said, remember, hmm. I said, uh, thank you guys for the time that we've been together. We we celebrate. I think we celebrate. Um, to the maximum for、mm. our youth, you know. I was, I have no regret whatsoever. We've done so many crazy things. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful page of my life.、Mm. It's just replaceable. My entire life doesn't matter how different of a person I am. Those time are still the most unforgettable, and I'll cherish forever. But unfortunately, that's not the things I wanted to have right now, and I'm so. Proud of us being independent individual, like you know, we have our new chapter of our life: getting married, having kids, things like that. I would just say I'm so proud of us being、uh, grew into、uh, independent、uh, individual, and、mm. I don't think staying, keeping us staying the same group is necessary. You know, because we, we definitely have the independence and ability to create whatever it's meaningful for us. So I sent this message and I left the group because it just me- meant like felt like it was meant to be. But, but it feels right to do that, you know.、Um, and not just the friendship, also me personally. If I know if I let go of this old friendship and cherish it forever, there will be new. Friends for、uh, there'll be new friends there waiting for me to create something new, new、right. memories, and new、um, chapters. Oh, I like、me. this. So you're saying, if I if I may, you're saying a couple things here. One of them is that、uh, it's probably best if you are getting towards the end of a relationship is to kind of like announce it, right? To say, hey, I really appreciate and admire everything that we've done together, but. It's time for me to, you know, spread my wings and move、mm-hmm. on. And then you're saying, if you do do this, you're opening a new opportunity for you to find friends that actually match、uh, the type of person who you are becoming. becoming. Exactly. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. So, did that happen for you after you、uh, separated from these two? Did you become friends with someone that、yeah. matched you? That's when I found my right now the best friend, Avier. Name is Avier. She is this wonderful person. She's so smart. She knows a lot of things. If she doesn't know something, she will find the answer. The kind of, oh my god, the kind of person. I can vouch for this.、Um, I know Avier very well. Yeah.、Um, wow. What a knowledge. Yeah, and Eric also mentioned about you know the true friend will make the effort to come see you. That's what she did. She she's half Taiwanese, half、uh, Canadian. Um, you know, she spent in Canada for a few years, but right now she lived in Taiwan. Currently, that's how how we met. We met in Taiwan. Um, but when I got uh when I uh when our baby was born、mm-hmm. this year May right May, I think so. You want to go? <laughs> Should we go ask him?、No. Let's go ask him. Hey, baby, <laughs> when did you come out? When is the butt day? <laughs> <laughs>、okay. Anyways, so when my When our baby was born, she came visit us in the USA, and we had a wonderful day together. That、so、was great. She's great, and she's exactly the person that I wanted to have in my life right now. So we can have everything. We talk about everything, and sometimes we will share our worries. And she is the person. She's really good. She's never share anything from a judgmental point of view. She will give you a different perspective, like objectively. Some, yeah, objectively, yes. Sometimes you know when you look at one thing, your your vision or your thoughts, your perspective could be very narrow based on your emotions or whatsoever.、Mm. But she creates something. She provides a chance for you to see things from a different angles, different perspective,、mm. and that's exactly what I need. 
You know, every time when I have a conversation with her, we can talk for like two or three hours. That's true. <laughs> One time, right? Just keeps going and、just、going, going and going, and just after the phone call, you just you feel like you learn a lot, and you, you feel are fulfilled. fulfilled, and you know there was someone will support you no matter what. That's right. It's like you can sh- you can share everything with them, and that's how it should be, right? Yeah, and the person, my friend. Avia, she create a very safe space. You know, sometimes you will share something really shameful for your life. You know, but she would just like how you poop the bed. <laughs> I did not. Poop the bed. I thought no shame. There. No shame in here. <laughs> I did not poop the bed. Okay, no shame. All right. All right. Stop creating something fake. All right. Okay, I poop my pants two times. All right. And、uh, All right. anyway, so she would just be. This person will just listen without any judgments whatsoever. You should create a very safe space for you to share,、mm. like a friend. Exactly. She she's a perfect example of how things should be when、uh, friendships are、uh, supposed to be built upon truth, honesty, and being able to share whatever it is, whether it's a hobby or an idea or、mm-hmm. an opinion. Yeah. You know. So that's a perfect example. I like、she's、that a lot. She's great. Um, and that's how a lot of friends, I think, in Taiwan and the USA are.、Mm-hmm. You know, it's that like if you have a real bond with somebody, it will last. And if it doesn't,、uh, you know, it's okay to separate and respect one another's opinions and wishes.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think the story that you just mentioned about the one that you finished and the one that you created、mm-hmm. is a perfect example of how you know we as humans. We change.、Yeah. We have these times in our lives where we do certain things, and we have friends that match that, and so we're able to really enjoy everything that we do with them because, well, they do the same thing that we do.、Mm-hmm. But、uh, sooner or later, one of us is going to do something different, and there's going to be that really awkward transition, you know, where you're going to have to say goodbye, or you know, you're just like looking at them differently, and you're like, "Why do you still do this?" But there's no reason to judge others、yeah. for their actions because. Once you used to do that thing, or once that used to be a thing that you really liked, you know, and so for them to keep on enjoying it, good for them,、yeah. right? <clears throat>、mm-hmm. So I think that's a really powerful message there,、um, and that's one thing I just really wanted to add at the very end of this episode is,、uh, you know, if you have a different point of view or if you have knowledge that uh, you uh, keep from other people because of thinking that it's better for them.、Mm-hmm. Um, You know, they they should respect you for that, right? So, like, if there's someone who thinks that you have an opinion、um, that is very different from you, and they get mad at you for that, like with your friends, like, like you said, like、mm-hmm. you, they got mad at you for having a different opinion and changing.、Um, I think I'm weird or something. They think you're weird, or they start hating you, or something、yeah. like that. I think it's a very shocking thing, and something that I found、uh, when I was living in Taiwan with a Taiwanese person, actually, where I didn't share something with them. Um, and they, we were friends, and they,、mm-hmm. and because I didn't share that with them, and they found out from somebody else、yeah. that I was keeping that information from them,、oh. they hated me for it. Absolutely hated me. I think that's very common. Like, I, I, it also happened to me、uh, a few times. Like, you, if you, we are true friends, you should share every secret that you heard from other people, and you should share everything with me. That's true friend,、mm. you know. But you know, I think the meaning behind it is like we create, we was so cared about belonging to each other. If I know, sorry, if I didn't know, somebody knows. I'm you know outside of that circle or something like that. Yeah. So I think that's that's a tricky location, right? It Because、is. it really depends on the closeness that you have with each of the friends. So let's say if you have one friend. Who is not so close to you, telling you something really personal,、uh, and they said, "Don't tell your closest friend." What would you do? For me, I'd probably still tell the closest friend. <laughs> do you? Yes, just because.、Okay. Ju- it really depends on the sensitivity of the information, but、mm-hmm. uh, most of the time, I probably still would because I'd rather keep the close friend than to、uh, appreciate the wish、mm-hmm. of someone who I'm not really close with. You know,、wow. so. It, It really depends because I'm an honest and tr-、uh, f- uh, trustworthy and faithful person.、Mm-hmm. So if I have a friend who's like you know my closest friend, right?、Um, and, like for example, Rochelle. If、uh, I hear something that is happening to Rochelle from somebody else, oh,、uh, that's different situation, right? Or、yeah. something about、uh, this friend that maybe Rochelle would know about. 
you know, they said, don't tell Rochelle this. I'm going to tell Rochelle, you know, because, you know, we're, we're, we're close as thieves, you know, if, uh, you know, we would steal together, we would kill together, we would do mm-hmm. anything for each other. Yeah. So, um, in that situation, no, sorry, you know, mm-hmm. I don't care if you ask me, I'm yeah. going to tell that person. Yeah. But, you know, but there are another situation is like, I just wanted to know, like gossip. This, I think that's the point here, like gossiping, mm. you know, uh, yeah. somebody use gossiping as the, the foundation if this friendship is strong or not. But basically, the gossip friend. Yeah, they mm. just you know, oh, we, they, they thought this is the true bounding, but it's not. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't set, don't base your relationship on gossip. You know, I mean, IEs can do that. All right, Amas can do that. <laughs> Because. But because that I mean like they love doing that. It's like <laughs> part of the culture is to and gossip, they right? They are experts. And they are expert of... gossipers. They are. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. And during their culture, who knows? That was maybe the way the bond, right? But yeah, and yeah, and yeah. The, in today's age is all about trust, you know. And so if you have a friend that's telling you to sacrifice your trust and uh, devotion to another friend for their sake, you really have to take a lot of things into consideration. Seriously. You yeah. Know? But uh, yeah complaining honesty trust uh Mm -hmm. sacrifice all of these things no matter what country you're in i think are very key factors in order to develop a friendship Mm -hmm. would you agree yes totally agree so um you know i i've been telling a lot of my students sharing their their worries you know like friendship relationship whatever Mm -hmm. any kind of relationship it's your call to make the decision for yourself and it's not just for yourself. Also, you know, like I said, I ended up this uh, friendship for like 10 years. I also providing them a chance to find someone. It's more suitable for them right now, you know. So it's all about you making the decisions. And, you know, who knows? You will find someone is even better for you. Mm. Um, if you, what is that saying? Like you close the door, the God will a window open. Opens. Yeah. The, close the, the door, a window opens. Yeah, that mm. thing. It's true. And I completely agree. And, uh, yeah, so friendship is, I think, a very crucial thing that, you know, every country right now is starting to experience less of. But there, just keep in mind, everybody, that there are opportunities all around you to create friends. You Mm -hmm. just really need to go out and look for them. Just remember, they're not your phones, okay? Um, (laughs) Or Instagram. Or Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that was a great talk, Anita. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your Thank stories. Thank you so much for your uh, sharing, too. No, I mean, your your stories were very open and, uh, like, you know, very hard to express, I'm sure. So I really appreciate all the things that you said today. I think a lot of people listening will mm-hmm. learn some very valuable lessons from them. That's um, that's what I do. I wish could help people to, you know, learn and grow. That's mm. my life goal right now. Well, I think you're doing a great job at it. Yeah, I'm gonna say uh, thank you very humbly. Huh. And uh, Eric, you're <laughs> doing humble. great um, yeah. <laughs> as well at as expressing. Self encouragement is also important. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes, mm. but Eric did a good job too. Thank you for sharing your wonderful stories and wonderful, insightful personal opinions. Wow, thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, wow, we got there. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you liked it, please make sure that you uh, uh, give us five stars on Apple Podcasts if you're Mm -hmm. listening there. If you're listening on Spotify, you can also do that. Another five-star rating. Mm -hmm. If you want to leave a review, we would love to hear from you and hear your opinions about what you think about this episode and any other episode that you listen to. Um, also just a quick shout out to, uh, all the people that we mentioned on, in this episode, you are great friends. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, we're very grateful to have you. Yeah. Um, one last thing I wanted to share is I learned it from another uh, podcast and I think it's a really wonderful message. So I'm going to share that. So at at the end of the podcast, they say, if you're out there listening to this, and if nobody have to tell you this, but you are worth it, you're loved, you're wonderful. So go out there and create a wonderful day. Quote from uh, Lewis House, House. on uh, School uh, of Greatness podcast. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so very great podcast. If you haven't heard it, definitely, I love it. definitely check it out. It's, am- it it's out. amazing. Yes. All so, right. So we will see you in the next episode. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for tuning in to Taiwanica. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you in the next episode.